Anyway, we're bobbing up and down there, about only about 50 yards, 100 yards in the water, and he did fire at us, but not to hit us. He could have hit us, to frighten us, and he did frighten us. And we came in, and then a little, like a small, like a brain gun carrier, small tank come along with it, firing, he was firing and we were keeping our heads down. They were Italians, believe it or not, but behind this tank was the Germans. And they ju we just sat to stand up and they took us prisoner. And the Germans took us over. Now, that potentially is very dangerous for you, isn't it? Because oh, obviously, as oh, course, with the yeah. standing commander order, the German oh, army had... Well, we had no, I had no... All I had on was a shirt. Right. And that's why we said to the officers, we were naval. Uh, we sp spun a story that we were naval and our ship... Had he said, you are number three commando, and you landed... So he knew more about the operation than we did. It's true, that is, yeah. Did, didn't you have your, your fighting knife with you? Your no, no, I, I, I got rid of that. <laughs> no, 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 because then they would have, yeah, yeah. So you, you were captured there um, yes. and held by the Germans. Uh, um, how long did they have you prisoner? For about, uh, no, it's about, say about midday. And we walked along, I pulled one of their trucks, because they were parachutists, mm. and um, back to near enough where we started, towards the bridgeway. Mm. And, um, and then, as I told you, as the night, night come on, getting dark, and our bloke fell asleep. And me and my sons, we, we crept away a couple of hundred yards, well, about a hundred yards, I suppose. There was a cave, and we went in there right at the back because there were some of our blokes in there wounded and that. We were going in the back and fell asleep, exhausted. We were knackered, <laughs> is putting it crudely. Yeah, yeah, we were. And then in the morning, there's German officers looking at the entrance, and I remember the sergeant. He said. You're, you're potty here, shoot you, let me go up and see him. I, I went and asked him for some cigarettes and water. He gave us some cigarettes, he couldn't spare any water, and he, he did say, words to the effect, that the 8th Army are looking for, or uh, are in the area, looking for our blokes. Yes. And then the one bloke, this is a, one fella, see, he all come back now, about 100 yards away, and one of our pals had got hold of a rifle. His name was Mapplebeck. His mate had been killed. He said, I'm going to shoot this so-and-so. But I said, hang on, he's English. And he was just like a man out of the First World War. He was a medic. He had his old steel helmet on, an old, old moustache, he said, I've been looking all over for you blokes. See, it's marvellous, really. And he, took, he, he said, I've got a vehicle up on the road. And we went in the vehicle, and he took us to a little place called Lentini, near Casabile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, then we were back to our unit. Back again. Mon and then after that, then... Montgomery rode by. <laughs> yes, he did, yeah, yeah. And he threw some cigarettes. They were V-cigarettes, and they were the worst cigarettes you ever smoked. 